and welcome to Omlat Lifestyle and I'm Chinwe here. Today you will meet two awesome ladies. The first one is Ali Huka, a writer and social historian who has spent 15 years plus here in Saudi Arabia as an expert, using her time and skills to impact both the company and local communities in a very positive way. You're welcome, Ali. Thank you for having me, Chinway. Thank you so much for coming. The second lady is Mrs. Munira Alashka, one of the first female educators in Saudi Arabia. Munira is an avid philanthropist and creatively uses her passion for collecting and preserving her Saudi heritage to both educate others and help numerous local charities and causes. As an energetic 73-year-old, she demonstrates that combining a passion and kindness can boost individual self-esteem and promote a healthy mind and body. Munira, thank you so much for letting us into your beautiful home. I am so honored to have you on this program. Thank you for having me on this channel. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that I met you. I'm very, very lucky to meet you, to meet one like you. And like Ali, you are not a friend. You are sisters. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. feel very honored to be a part of you and your family. And now we have a surprise guest. Who is Monero's neighbor? She's like a sister to Monero. She just showed up. What a blessing to have you here today. Fazil Zamil. Thank you so much for coming and I am so honored that you came in here with that special gift and um, amazingly, really appreciate and love you. Thank you so much for coming. I know her more than 50 years. We are like sister with, with the Zamil. She's a sister of Faisal Zamil. Oh, my brother. <laughs> his brother and he's very famous. Wow. With his kindness, with his, uh, he has a store, of course, in Hobart. So everybody knows him, that's why. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, but she's like a sister. Our uh, children grow up together. Oh, man. And wow. we are like sister. And uh, wow. Yeah. I love her. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. For you. Munira and her charity work and the community and us as experts. And was you are always with me, helping me with anything I do. Yes. She's always, always be there with me. Yes. So now we want to talk about kindness, which is what these women here exhibit. So the question is, what is kindness? According to an article from the New York Clinic, and I quote, kindness is more than a behavior. It is an act of helpfulness without any reward or expectations of reward or gratification. Acts of showing kindness to others have been proved to positively increase a person's self-esteem, empathy, compassion, whilst also improving mood. Quotation close. And that is from Mayor Clinic. Today we invite you to Munira Alashka's home to explore her wonderful collection of Saudi heritage and to hear some of the stories of her motivation and how she has built such a great legacy. Munira demonstrates that kindness is more than a behavior in the way that she shares her collection with others and to the benefits of others. She presents an example and a challenge to all of us, all of us, even you guys watching, to how we might use our own personal passions and interests 
to generate support for those the less privileged than us. Kindness may be viewed by some as a simple and even an old-fashioned quality, but it can impact widely and help us personally stay positive and healthy. Tell us about your collection. What will someone say on a visit to your museum? I want them to see the culture of Saudi Arabia and I explain to them what our grandparents do. They have brain, they are smart, they do things. What are we doing it now but in a different way? It's like a method, it's like a starter for uh, for what are we doing now, exactly like, like, like what are we doing now, but in a simple way. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's our grandparents. They are very smart. This is one of the most beautiful things I've heard in a very long time. Because we all are losing our minds and thinking that we know it all and with all this COVID at the age, things are phasing up and here is someone, kindness shows up and you are trying to help all of us. Whether you're Saudi yeah? or you are Arabic or you are anywhere, Western or Africa, you can benefit from what Munira is doing in this region. You're helping us to remember history and Ali is a historian, social historian. It's and like educational. It's educational. It's educational. So we cannot forget our past because he who forgets their past, actually, self esteem will be difficult for you. And I really would give you kudos and say thank you for doing this for all of us. It's not just for Saudi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to this. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you for patient to listen to me. No, and you, to... you're an amazing woman. <laughs> I admire you all the time. I started uh, with a small piece, like uh, a play made of wood. My uh, uncle's wife gave it to me, but I did not like it. I said, what's this wooden plate? What I'm going to do with it? So I told her, of course, thank you. And they put it uh, uh, in the closet in the kitchen. If she gave me a crystal or china or something plate, maybe I will enjoy it at that time. And after a year, my mother went to the same uh, city and she got me a measuring cup made of wood. When I saw this measuring cup, I said, oh, I have plate where these are matching each other. Then I put them, I put the two pieces, I put them in, a, in one side of the house. And when the, one time I was going to the man, I found an iron. I said, oh, I have two old pieces. I'm going to buy this third one, you know, at least three pieces. And I bought that, the third piece, it was iron. Wow. And then after one by one by one, until now it's part of me. Oh they are, you know, every piece like my children. Wow. That's how it started. Wow. What a great way to start. Let's talk with I. Ali Hukam, a special friend, you have been part of this for 15 years plus. You have worked with Monira. I came here like eight years ago and I have watched you impact this community in a very special way. And I admire you for that. And that's part of why I really feel honored that you are in this channel today to be part of this as you exit. And I hope that this is not going to be the end. Could you tell us, Monira, Fazia, and the audience, what has been your best moments working with Monira? With well, charity organizations <laughs> and all of these great things that Monira do for her community. Well, I've known Monira since I first came here, and I think I think having Monira as a friend is always an adventure because she's an incredibly courageous woman and she's an incredibly generous woman and she's a lot of fun to be with as well. 
and, um, and, and, and when you're around Manira for any amount of time, you can't help but be impacted by the heart that she has for other people and drawn into that. And it's been a privilege in my time here to be able to not only have Manira as a friend, but to be able to help to some degree, to some small degree with the work that she does and um, you know the different activities that she's allowed, that, that she's created a scenario where as expats we can be involved mm -hmm. and help and learn about the wider community here as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been a privilege and it's, it's had some fun moments along the way and, um, and I'm passionate about history too and culture and um, Manira is so generous with the way that she she shares her own culture. She's passionate about preserving that culture, and she was preserving that culture before it became trendy and fashionable to do so. Mm -hmm. In fact, even when it was really frowned on to some degree, you know, to be thinking about the past, um, you know, she saw the value in, in, in having in starting to collect things that were important to preserve. Mm -hmm. and, um, and to create her museum. Um, and I've just always found her very inspiring, you know, that to, to be able to use her passion and her interest to um, welcome people into her home, to give them a, a, a taste of a Saudi Arabian life, to give them a taste of the heritage of Saudi Arabia, just so that they have a more enriching experience of being here mm -hmm. in the kingdom. I think that's that's been an amazing gift to so many people from ambassadors down to school children. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a very special thing that you've done here, Manira. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a privilege to sort of work alongside you and learn from you, mm -hmm. from your passion and your kindness to others. Thank you very much. You did a lot, you did a lot. When I need things, I color, you are there. Oh, yeah. You are my right hand. Thank you. Like Fozia, she's my right hand. I have two right hands, <laughs> Fozia and you. So you are you always there. You, you did a lot, a lot for the community, well, for the charitable group. You know, without you, I can't do anything. Thank you. But I think what's inspirational is your vision. You know, you, you have a vision of what you want to achieve and how, and you have some really great creative ideas about how to achieve that. And along the way, um, like when we put some of the culture shows together, um, along the way people learn things. You know, it's not just about putting on a show, but it's about having an experience. It's about learning about culture. It's about learning about history. You know, learning about the geography of Saudi Arabia. Um, there's just so so much to it. But, you, know, you, you are a born educator. That's important things yeah. to show people the culture. I'm trying to do it in the right way. Of course, I, I made mistakes, but I will try my best to, do, to show others, you know, uh, foreign or uh, or even Saudi, the young Saudi, even they get to know their culture, the olden days. But I'm trying my best to show. And I think your, your personality is just so engaging that you make it easy for people to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, I you make so. it enjoyable Very for people true. to learn. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Yeah. yeah. So could you tell us about some of the charities you work and support? I'm a member in the church group in Daman uh, called Jude. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is another or two church groups in Khobar. Uh, Fatat al Khalij and Wood. We do a lot of things. We uh, help orphanage, we help needy. You know, we try to collect money to buy them, them things, clothes, uh, coat bones, to help in housing, to help in, in anything uh, they need. You are such a kind woman. You know, it's just been amazing to get to know Munira and um, the more. I spend time with you, the more inspired I get to be the best and see how I can actually use my passion to show kindness to others without thinking of the words. I think that's the main thing here, that you do all of this, putting all of your energy 
and that's why I see you looking like nobody would even know that age that you have come <laughs> that long way, you know. Beautiful and hot. Oh, <laughs> but let's keep it twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that you, you know, it's just been amazing to know somebody like you. Thank you. And um, we're getting to the end of this question time. And I hope you will be able to take us through the museum. We're going to be able to explore the museum so you can tell us more of the things that you have in there. Just in case, you never know who is out there that's thinking, oh, Saudi Arabia is so open now. I can actually go there. And it's easy to come to Saudi Arabia to get a visitor, visit to come in. And, you know, if you are lucky or blessed to meet this amazing woman and be able to see some of these great things that we are privileged to see. You know, I often say that you go through a place and you never really let the place go through you. We that have come here, we have gone through, we came here not knowing that we are actually going to get double warning. We came here for work. And now we get to know about all of this Saudi culture. I've been in the wedding traditional things and just in the Arabian way and it's beautiful. So we got double one of our money and we are so blessed to be part of it. If you were talking, Manira, if you were talking to a young to a group of young people, what would you tell them about the personal benefits of charity work? We encourage, we encourage the young people to help and we show them now their families, we take them with us and this, so, and for volunteering and uh, so they will like this work and we tell them this, what will stay, what we'll gain later. This will we, we put it in the bank. Mm -hmm. That's what we put in the bank. That's God will keep it for us. Any good work, it will, God will keep it for us for the future. Mm -hmm. So we talk uh, to them and we show them when they see the people and they participate from now, they will learn then and they will uh, continue. Mm -hmm. It's the kindness that come from all of us that give you well, the fulfillment. It's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, Manira is referring there to her religion, to Islam, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and the beliefs in Islam that there is a reward for being kind mm -hmm. and yet so, you know the funny thing is this has been something that's been known for hundreds of years but now science is saying it's good for you to be kind mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it's taken a long time for for science to catch up <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that to be kind you know yeah, exactly exactly and um you know a, a lot of um therapists are now encouraging people with depression to go out and be kind to people to do charity work because it actually helps their well-being. Mm -hmm. And yet it's something, you know, that the major world religions have known for a long time, that it's it's a good thing, you know, to be kind. And that it has a benefit for you, not just now, but in the future in as the future. well. What, that's yeah. what are we aiming for. Yeah. Not for now, we're aiming for the future. Mm. So kindness, charity, and all of this, give us it's like kindness charity give you fulfillment self-esteem because we keep looking self-esteem where do we get it from you can get it from going beyond yourself like remove yourself from the equation and think about us life is not like we all are in this borrowed skin we are not going to be here permanently we are going to somewhere at the end of it and we need to think about how do I get fulfillment? And I believe that kindness, like Munira has shown me in all of these conversations, Ali, you've been amazing, you know, and um, Fazia, you know, you, you know, it's so great that you just came and I am so glad you're part of this conversation <laughs> today. I think all of us in this room, one way or the other, work towards the same goal be kind, treat others the way you want them to treat you. So let's focus more towards charity. Now we're going to go with Monira to explore the museum and see 
some of the things that we're gonna show us. This is the museum and the archi architecture, architecture, yeah, to present uh, Najik and the Eastern Province. Because uh, I was born in Najik and I grew up in the Eastern Province. <laughs> yeah, the windows to present Eastern Province and the white and the top of this to present the next. So I mixed yeah. like that is the problem. This is scale. They weigh with this rock. They know how much it weighs. And here it has side or like this here. So they move this one to this side and they hang whatever they want to, to weigh, they put it here. Yeah. And just they move from one, they calculate it and they know how much it yeah. weighs. We have different kind of doors here. This is from Naj. This window from our house in Jubail. It's over, maybe over 60 years. This is Ahlan wa Sahlan. Ahlan wa Sahlan. Welcome. More than welcome. More than welcome. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. Museum. Wow. I would like to introduce Uncle Saleh <laughs> and Uncle Hamad. Uncle Saleh. Uncle Saleh. Yes, he's sitting in the madras. He's yeah. making the coffee. Mm. This is Naj, like Naj area. Okay. Yeah, he's making the coffee. When he wants to invite people, they don't have telephone. As I told you, mm -hmm. they are smart. What do they do? You. Oh, wow. They are grounding the coffee beans or the cardamom, as you uh -huh. see, uh -huh. like this. And People in the street passing, they will hear. Even if they're not grinding, just you do grind. That means he's in the house. That's I am in the house. He's ready for business. Yeah, please wow. come. Yeah. So people just, they push the door and they come. And then Uncle Hamad just pushed the door and he came to wow. visit with him. And it's a winter time. So as you see, they're closed. And here is the money. This is from all the kings of Saudi Arabia. That's the first king, King Abdul Aziz. After King Abdul Aziz, King Saud, and then Faisal, then Khalid, then Fahd, then Abdullah, then our King Salman. This is all the money used in their time. Mm. This is used, Aramco used to use. This 10 points, you see, Arabian American Oil Company, and this is like a coupon. They give it to buy from uh, the commissary. Yeah. And that's the television? Black and white, of course. Wow. From the first TVs in Saudi Arabia. This is for writing and reading and all for educational. This one and this side. Here, toys for the children. These are most of these for my, my children's. Okay. Oh, wow. What they use. Yeah. yeah, what they use. For my son, he's uh, now 52. <laughs> so that's his bus. Oh. And that's for my for my daughter. Wow. And for my other son. So this from the All family. Toys. Yeah. yeah. Here I have these three shelves. These for Aramco. Not Aramco now, Aramco before. Yeah. Aramco handbooks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were very important in the early days of Aramco because they told people a lot of information about Saudi culture and Saudi heritage okay. and um, the different parts of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot more than just um, mm -hmm. sort of guidelines. It was um, actually cultural information as well. These are for weighing, it's for grinding, grinding weeds, and this clothes this section from Hijaz area. All these from like Mecca, Medina, oh. Taif, Al Ula, headpiece for the ch for children. This Amma Suraj, 
and anti uh, fatu. Anti fatu. This is from Hijaz. <laughs> That's a custom, the men's custom, like this. This is the two pieces I started with. Oh. Yeah. Wow. This is the first piece, the one that I did not like. Mm -hmm. What do I do with it? Mm -hmm. From my uncle's wife, gave it to me. And then this from my mother. When she gave me my mother, this one said, Oh, I have something wood, it, it match. Wow. So I bought these two that pieces. So I bought classic. Uh -huh. I put it in a bookcase, you know, I have a bookcase. I put it inside. And then one time I saw this iron. Yes. I bought wow. it. This is the first piece I bought. So wow. I said, At least three all, you know, to wow. put together. These are for special cookies called oh. Kileja. All these for weighing and measuring or the illegal weighing and legal measuring cups. This is all four phones, even without a number. And these not dynamites. <laughs> this battery for phone. Oh wow. My cameras. Oh yes, look at this. Wow. Here we have medical equipment. All these are different medical equipment. 1920 and this box and you know miscellaneous things. This box was uh, in the Queen House. Somebody took it and they brought it here. Wow. I got it here. Yeah. Wow. This side is Najat area, the clothes. This is here, this is for my grandmother. This is my grandmother. Wow. And this is for my son. Oh. Wow. My son Samer, when he was one and a half year old. Wow. So it's uh, almost. 50, 50, 50 yeah. years. Yeah. Oh. Like this is a bride and her mother and her sister. And this is another bride from Katir. The diver. Oh, okay. This is, this is Hussein. When he's diving for pearl, they take the heavy, this heavy piece. Yeah. It's very heavy. It's like anchor, is it? Yeah. They tie it in his hand. Oh. So he will go very fast to the bottom of the sea, sea because there's no oxygen tanks or that mm. to help him. When he go down, you know, he has these, uh, and he closes his nose with this one. Yeah. Yeah. And he takes several, like this bag, uh, they call it gear, and uh, the, he immediately, you know, grab, take um, uh, shells and put, fill them. Yeah. And immediately people on the ship, they count when he jumped, they count one, two, three, four, and they start, you know, coming up to pull him, you know, again. Some, sometimes they come alive, sometimes they come dead. Oh. Yeah. And uh, when they get the shells. Oh, yes, the yeah. pearl. Yeah. This um, one, they yeah. this uh, to right. take out the shells. After yeah. collecting all the shells, these are for separating the the shell, the shell and the, the, the pearl pearl on the shell. For yeah, for separating the sizes. Of oh the yes, of yeah, course, yeah. For to separate the sizes, and then get it ready. Put it in the buckets here, so mm. it will be ready to sell, like here. They put each size in one bucket, so yes. they will, it will be ready to sell. This side is the north. This is Sita. Uh, they put this one, the Kwaja. This they put it on top of the camel when they're traveling. traveling. And she's sitting. She is working, doing her knitting, you know, mm. their ropes with the, from the wool from the sheep. So in the night, the men, they take out this up on top of the camera, they put it down when they're traveling. In the morning, they put this back and she will sit relaxed 
and they uh, they go on. You know, always the ladies sitting just like this, uh, easier for them, yeah. yeah. And this this is the clothes for the north. From and the north? As, yeah, from the north. And as you see, yeah. look, in the back, a little longer, bit longer. Yes. longer. Do you know why? So that they can cover their tracks. Oh, yes. 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 When they walk, uh, their footprints it will show, and there is a lot of people, they know the person from their footprint. Mm -hmm. If you walk, they know that Chinui walked here. <laughs> Ali walked this side. This. So the ladies, they are, we are smart. They yeah. make it wrong so it will erase our footprints. So ah. they make them know where we are. Yeah. So clever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> clever, clever, clever. And this is the house of the Bedouin, the tin. We call it Beit Shar or you know tent house, uh, and always divided to two or three section. The right side always, always for men. So when a man like this man, like this Abdul Aziz, he came on his camel. Yeah. He was tired. He saw from far. He saw the house. Uh -huh. He saw the house. He doesn't know who's the family who's living in this house. Mm -hmm. Just he saw a house. He is tired. Just he put the camel on the side, and he know he Both knows that the right no, side for men. So he came and he said. Then after he's sitting, he make a noise, coughing like make a noise. The lady of the house, she comes to him. She greets him. She bring him coffee, uh, buttermilk, and dates. And when it's uh, lunch time or dinner time, she will grab a sheep, she will slaughter a sheep, she will cook it, and she will serve him. Wow. If she doesn't, if she doesn't do this, she may get a divorce. Oh. Because he's a guest. And in the sunset, set to the, you know, when her husband comes, he will come. He will greet him. He doesn't know. He doesn't ask him, "Who are you?" or "What do you want?" He's welcome guest. Hmm. You must welcome yeah. the guest. At least for three days, no ask if he stay for, if he stay for three days uh -huh. or more. He doesn't ask, you know, what do you want or who are uh, you? He just a special guest and hospitality. Yeah. yeah. If he will introduce himself, okay, if he doesn't introduce if he doesn't say who are you? Wow. If he say like who are you like this, like he's rude. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So after, you know, maybe, maybe after three days, he said, can we help you if you need any help? You know, in a nice way. And here, this is Rifa. She's making buttermilk in this one. They put yeah. the yogurt, and this is the real one. This one is the real one. This one is from uh, animal skin. Yeah, is this is animal skin. Yeah. They put uh, the yogurt here. They shake it. Mm -hmm. to separate out the butter out of the buttermilk. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, the excess, because they drink the buttermilk, the excess, they make cheese. This is the cheese mm. they make. Wow. They make it out of the yogurt. They boil it, boil it, until all the water Just disappear, out. yeah. Wow. And then uh, they make it with their hand, they put it in the top of the tent to just to dry, dry and to stay for uh, for a year. Yeah. Some music yeah. sections. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes. Like yeah. yeah. And here in the middle. Yeah, this had such nice little yeah. tables. And here the watches. Keep the table in the garden for If these are my watches. Watches collection. Yeah. yeah. And the jewelry. And jewelry. Typewriters. Do you yes. Know, you know what's this? No. Is that for this? Is it a broken? Oh, the broken one. Is it a broken? Look at it. Is it a broken? No, it's not a broken. This is for. Ah. To shave. Shave. Shaving ball. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I told you they are smart. Yes. Very smart. Yeah. These are for me for shaving. Yeah. Yeah. As you see this section here. Here for just mm -hmm. kitchen items. Yeah, a uh, collection, plate, bowl, spoon, 
I have some plates here from King Saud House. Oh. Or Palace, King Saud Palace. Wow. These cups and these the plates. Wow. And this are clothes from the southern area. Like I see here, Abha. And this, Uncle Ali. This is Ali. Ali. And this is Hamda. Hamda. Yeah. From oh. Rijal Alma. He's one of the flower men. <laughs> and all the clothes here. Yeah. Abha Asir and uh, Hamis and Shed, all from that area. From there. They got different, uh, like a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Different areas have their different designs. Yeah. Different shades. You see this piece? To identify them. Look. You wear it just like this. Ah, oh. see, nice. Just to like protection. Is that for men or women? For women. For women. women. Yeah. It's yeah. a colorful, yeah. yeah. What is that for? For climbing, yeah. for palm tree. climbing the palm tree. Like oh, this. yeah. When they to bring the you know the dates yes. from the palm tree or to or cutting or something. They use this one. They put it around the palm tree and around themselves. And oh, climbing up. Climbing. Yeah. yeah. So it's clever. Yeah, clever. I think some part of the they Caribbean the and the Caribbean as well. They do. Nigeria. Yeah. We have different kind of uh, safar tasks. They you know, for traveling or yes, people. yes. They take food with them. This is the baby bottle. Oh. See the baby bottle. Yeah. My mom fed me with one like this. Oh. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.